Today, we're making two different meads with mango honey. Let's get started. All right, so in today's video, I have about, well, this is about seven pounds left of mango honey. Um, I am making a mango honey traditional mead, and alongside that, I decided I wanted to make a recipe with it. So I am going to be using and making a mango and peach mead as well. So mango honey with peaches. So what I've done here is I took my honey, right here you see, and I mixed everything up. I mixed together the following recipe. It was five pounds of mango honey, water up to two gallons. Um, I am using the Premier Cote de Blancs. I'm probably saying that wrong, yeast. So roughly about two and a half grams for this one. And then I'm using some Go Firm within my water here, and I will be using Fermade K for this. I mixed all of that stuff up, um, sanitized everything, of course, I used Star Sand, and made sure everything was sanitized, ready to be used. Um, mixed all of that stuff up, and then I now have a gravity reading here for us. So the gravity reading to start this off is 1.072. My plan for this is to ferment um, this two gallons of this mead through the primary as a traditional. So this is two gallons of mead with the mango honey. We're gonna ferment all the way through the primary. After the primary, I'm gonna take one gallon off of this and put it into a carboy. We're gonna treat it just like a traditional. So we're gonna keep it as it is, mango honey and yeast and all that stuff. Uh, we'll probably back sweeten and do some stuff with that. But the other half is gonna have some peaches put on it. So I recently just got a bunch of nice peaches from Colorado. These are Palisade peaches. And I chopped them up and went ahead and frozen, froze them. The plan is when this is in the secondary, we're gonna add, I think I wanna do four pounds. It's, I believe this is four pounds of peaches. Now I'm debating on whether or not to like maybe uh, try and juice them, do something to get extra juice flavor out. Um, I don't know what that looks like yet. I will not put them in frozen, of course. Anyways, I have, uh, we gotta get to there. So this is some yeast. This is our yeast put into some must with some go firm. This is rehydrating, has been rehydrating. We're ready to just go and pitch it in. So with this being at 1072, to start, we are looking at roughly a, I gotta do a little math now. I cheated, it's Monday. I don't I don't wanna do math. We're like at a 9.3% possible ABV mead, which is perfect, I think that's good. Not too hot, right in the middle. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pitch everything into here, stick our lead on and get this going. Um, if you've seen any of my meads before, I like to do a traditional with my honeys and I like to do a, res a mead recipe of sorts. Adding peaches makes this a little bit of a little bit of a recipe, um, but it's not like super crazy. Let's see what it's like. Put the lid on, airlock, write down everything. Come back after the primary. All right, we are done fermenting after only about 14 days. So uh, this is about 1.002, so we're at that end point. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take and move half of this out into this carboy you see right here. And this will be the traditional. And then we are going to take the other half, leave it in here, and we will be putting all of our fruit on top of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and rack this over and then we'll talk about the taste test. Okay, so I've moved over one gallon into, into here and I kind of goofed. I, I said I was gonna go ahead and add my fruit, but I, I just pulled them out of the freezer. So they're not quite ready to be introduced. Even if I wanted to get them out of this bag, it'd be impossible. So. These are gonna wait. Um, I'll show you a clip right now. Uh, this is a couple hours later of me putting them in after they've thawed some. But let's talk about the taste test of this right here. Ooh, the fruitiness. That is really interesting. It's it's so bright, floral, bright, fruity. That mango is like 
I mean, it doesn't taste like mango, but it's got tropical-y notes. I think that's gonna be fantastic. So it's degassing in this current state. And I'll tell you right now, this is, if you're making mead, you don't wanna drink it too early. Because while yeast are involved uh, and still really in the brew, what happens is they take some time to fall out. That's why we talk about racking off of things before you taste test. This needs some more time. Yeast in your gut don't really go together, so I would not, that's why I only took a couple sips of this, I would not be drinking all of that because my gut would not be very happy with that choice. So, um, you saw me introduce the fruit. Now we're gonna wait about, I don't know, well, it's maybe two, two to three weeks for this fruit side to settle. This traditional is just gonna set for a bit and then we'll kind of go from there. All right, so our mango, honey, just whatever traditional has been sitting, it's degassing or, I mean, I believe it's degassing because I think it was done. Here's what the peach version looks like and it looked pretty well used. It's been about two weeks, so we need to do something with it now. I'm gonna go ahead and rack this into a new container or AKA this glass carboy and we will go ahead and do a taste test after that. All right, so it's racked over. Got a taste test of it right here. Did the peaches add a little bit of sugar content to this? Absolutely. Do I know exactly how much? No, um, I could have used a refractometer, which is this fancy thing that essentially helps you measure gravity. I could have gotten a little bit of juice from that and kind of calculated. Quite honestly, I didn't do that. I'm just gonna assume I added probably 10 points of gravity to this thing and there was some re-fermentation. So anyways, what I wanna do now, let me tell you what it tastes like right after the peaches. I definitely like mixed it up a little bit. Ooh, the, the mouth feels very buttery, very thick. A light peach flavor, but it's got some fermented peach side. Still a little uh, slight. It needs more honey for sure. It's very peachy on the nose, which is interesting. It's not bad. Um, okay, so here's what I've done. I've collected a little bit more. This is like a lot of sediment. What's gonna happen? Both of these need to finish degassing and going through that process. So we're gonna let them set. Ultimately, I anticipate there, there being a fair amount of sediment coming out of this one. This is gonna be also clear out to sediment. I'll probably put this in a fridge or somewhere where I can help it cold crash and bring down that sediment. Um, I wanna retain as much meat as I can. So. We're going to let these sit for a while, come back once they've aged, had a little more time, then we'll back sweeten and do everything else. All right, it has been a couple of weeks since we moved both of these off. We're about 32-ish days old. Um, we're gonna go ahead and stabilize both of them. Now, I am choosing to stabilize with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. They are, they congruently, they halt yeast fermentation and preserve a mead. You don't have to use this method. You could use pasteurizing, age it for an eternity, cold crashing to some effect, but I'm choosing to do this. Let's get a taste test before we stabilize. Um, once we stabilize, we will actually take and back sweeten here in about 24 hours. All right, so in this hand is the peach mead, and in this hand is the traditional. Ooh, well, that peach character is really nice. A super interesting. It's got a big mouth feel. I think the skins of the fruit helped a lot. I think just some sweetness will really pronounce more of the peach flavor. It's got the essence there, but it's kind of like the same thing you get with like LaCroix, where you get the essence of lime or whatever, but you don't have any sweetness or something to really bolster the true flavor. So it's there, but it needs some help. Let's look at the regular traditional. Ooh, a very different. This one feels like it has a slight fusel to it, honestly. Almost like a little bit of like a acetone side, which is interesting. The main character of the honey is nice though. Not a big, not as big of a fan as the of the traditional. I think there's something going on here that the yeast might have got a little bit stressed. Something weird, but the peach version is fantastic. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stabilize potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. All right, so both of these are stabilized now. We are able to put them away. I'm not really in a rush for these by any means, um, but I'm gonna let these sit. A couple days come, will go by and then we will take and add some more honey because it'll be safe to. We won't have to worry about re-fermentation. So I'll come back when we're ready to add more honey. 
All right, we're back. It has been a couple weeks. We've just been letting these set. We're gonna go ahead and do another quick taste test. Again, you can tell color difference, all of that stuff. Oh yeah, I love the essence of peach. I just need more sweetness from peach because you can get it on the nose. I bet vanilla would be really good with this. Mm, just needs more honey. How about the traditional? Yeah, it's got a little more cling, a little more bite to it. The mango honey, mango honey has more um, tropical side. This is highlighting more peach side. These have both been stabilized as we talked about. We are now going to back sweet. I will tell you exactly how much honey I've added at the end of my back sweetening, but let me do that real fast. All right, I have back sweetened these both. We have put exactly six ounces of mango honey into here and four ounces into here. Um, let me tell you what they taste like. The traditional is like so juicy. So you'd think with these being only like 1.006 that the actual feel of it wouldn't be very sweet, but it has a lot of sweetness. I think it's fantastic. It still has some heat from alcohol, but that's okay. How about the peach one? Oh yeah, the essence of peach. Same idea, mango honey. There's a lot of sweetness to it. Only four ounces of honey in this one. Super good. I have been in this process, I decided it probably would be interesting to oak these. So we're gonna go ahead and oak this. This is um, one whole ounce of oak. Now I'm gonna, I put it in water, sanitize water to, you know, basically make sure it's good, make sure it's clean. We're gonna go ahead, I just strained it off there, and I'm gonna go ahead and split this and add it into each one. So this is just an American oak, a light toast, so nothing too crazy. But I do think oak will help the tannic value because they have a lot of sweetness, they have a lot of nice honey character, but they're missing the real, uh, they don't have tannin, they have a lot of honey character. They're missing tannin. Okay, so that's half an ounce of American light toast oak in for each one. We will now let them set for a couple weeks at least and taste test them regularly. We're hoping that there's no re-fermentation. There shouldn't be. And then we will bottle them. All right, we are back. It's been four weeks and these have sat with the oak in. We're gonna go ahead and taste test them. This will be the final part of the video and I'll explain kind of everything else that I do post this point. But on my right hand, right here, this is the traditional, notably much hazier than the peach mead, which if you know much about peaches, most of the time they have um, more pectin in them, meaning that they're more hazy. So this is an odd thing that the traditional is more hazy. So traditional right hand, left hand, super clear. This thing looks fantastic. This is the peach mead. So let's go ahead and taste them with four weeks of oak. This is the traditional. Oh man, it, it smells fantastic. I love this um, super bright fruity aroma from the mango side. And the oak now, it's, it's adding some extra layer to it. It's got like a tannic value on the nose. It definitely smells like barrel aged, even though we didn't barrel age it, we just did chips. How about the peach one? Oh gosh, this one. First of all, I've been taste testing them regularly, so I know it's gonna taste fantastic. It also has that oak character. It has oh, the, the brightness of the peach and like, oh my. This is probably, I and I don't say this a lot. This is the best smelling mead I think I've ever had, aroma wise. Absolutely fantastic. Whoo, taste time. Oh man. So that oak is just rounding out this very, not super sweet, um, mango honey that is, is there. This thing is incredible. Oh yeah. It's still got a little bit, the slightest bit of alcohol content. I mean, we're, we're not that long, or not that old. We're back in, let's see, gotta do a little math now. We're about three months, two and a half months old. So really not too old. But the the really nice side um, you get from the mango honey, which again, floral and tropical and has the somewhat of a mango sense to it. 
and the oak are just kind of conjoining together to be i mean they play very well together essentially so i do have a concept i'm going to do with this in a moment but i don't think it's going to need it this the acid value on this seems a little low or um so i think there's a chance i could adjust that but i'll talk about that in a second that's the traditional super good i love this mango honey peach Ooh, yeah. This one's much more light. It has more, um, like the body of it is very light. The mouth feels different. And I, you know, I think that's interesting. There is a notable layer of sediment here at the bottom of this one that I think is just peach stuff that has fallen out of suspension. But the peach character is super bright, super nice. The sweetness is supporting the peach character, so it is like a little bit like biting into a peach which is nice and then of course the oak comes in it kind of sands the edges and rounds out everything i do like the acid value of this one it's got a little more bite to it so speaking of acid peach one's great let's talk about acid profile on this this uh traditional i have a little bit of tartaric acid here now there are three main types of acid there's malic there's citric and there's tartaric malic is what's found in um you know, pears and apples and stuff like that. That's the kind of more rounded, not super bright acid profile. Citric is what you find in orange, oranges and lemons and stuff like that. That's citric acid um, and limes, of course. And then tartaric is what you find in grapes and those things. It's not as bright. It's kind of like a, well, I'd say it might be in between. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small, 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 I mean, tiny, tiny pinch of tartaric acid. I just need a little bit because this stuff goes a long way. We're gonna mix this in. We're gonna see if any, if upping the acid value or adjusting the acid balance of this traditional helps it out. Mm, I don't know. Making it more bright doesn't really help. Hmm. I honestly like it how it is. It's very warming, very um, mellow. Whereas when you put more acid with it, you know, this is using a very tame acid. Citric would make it, make it super bright. Malic might work, but tartaric is kind of where my brain is at. Using an acid to help with that isn't necessarily increasing it in a nice way. I like kind of like the honey warmth acidity as it was. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna keep it as it is. My next step with these, not adjusting acid, as I just said, I am going to go ahead and bottle this one right here. This is the peach one. Now, I'm bottling this one, I'll show you right now, me bottling it, because it's ready to go. Um, when I rack it off the oak, it's gonna have a bunch of headspace. I just need to go ahead and bottle it so it will be okay. Now, the other side of the world, the traditional, I am actually gonna try and clear this up a little bit. I normally don't care about clarity, but honestly, having something look so stinking clear, like this traditional right here, or this peach bean, makes me really wanna get this one to be clear. So I'm gonna try and clear this up and I'll show you kind of what I do. I'll put it on the screen right now, the things I do to clear it up if I can. And then of course, bottling it. Um, I wanna see if I can make it clear. Will that affect the flavor profile? No, it should not affect the flavor profile. Maybe it will though, I don't know. Uh, I highly doubt it. Most of the time, those clearing things don't really affect that. Anyways, this video is done. This is a traditional mead and a peach and mango honey mead. This is an incredible recipe. And, um, you know, full transparency, this is the first time I've done a peach mead with mango honey, but holy cow, it is good. I would highly, highly, highly recommend you make this yourself because I think you will, you will definitely enjoy it. So, thank you for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, do all the things to support the channel. Um, go buy some mango honey and make yourself a mango mead, or uh, mango honey mead, I should say. Make yourself a mango mead too. Try one of these recipes on the screen, and I hope to see you in a future video. Cheers.